Hello, Reformers, and welcome back to Clash of Kings. Now, when we left off, we had just taken the final fief of the Valantine forces, and we have given quite a few fiefs to Balakwo, and he has made his way all the way over from the Iron Islands, and he is now here in front of me. So, we will now be exchanging fiefs with him, if that would be possible. I believe it is, so let us do that. I wish to ask you something, and... We will be exchanging fiefs. So, I will be taking Pebbleton from him so that he has, well, let's just say less to concentrate on by switching between the two places. I believe one of you mentioned in the comments that that was probably a mistake to give him quite a few Valantine lands. And I would agree with you, but I think maybe it would be wonderful to have one strong vassal in this area, and then I'm thinking maybe it would be an idea to... Well, let's just say, declare war against some other faction in the north of Valantis. Obviously not the Bravosians or anything like that, but maybe Lorath. Well, that's what I'm thinking of at the moment, but yes, let me know what you think about that in the comments, because I will not be taking any severe action just yet, but I think maybe taking Lorath would be rather good, because then we could make one of our other companions... A vassal, and then we'd have three vassals with some rather strong lands. Well, should we say two vassals and myself, of course. Okay, so, on with the swap. We will take Pebbleton, and I will be giving you Menti. Ah! Oh. Okay, so, it appears I will have to give him Volantis itself. I really don't want to do that, because that is my only... Well, that is my only fief, so... <laughs> oh my goodness, okay, this is going to be a little difficult, perhaps, then. Ah, uh, I thought we had found a solution in this manner right here, but it appears not. So I will have to give him Volantis. That is something I don't really want to do. So, what if we went to the north? in these lands, and took Lorath, as you can see here, I'm not entirely sure what kind of units they are fielding, or anything like that, but, according to one of you a while ago, I believe Lorath does not have any allies, so in theory we should be able to take it without any issues, and then they would be eliminated very quickly indeed, and we would be able to swap, potentially, uh, this castle with Pebbleton, and then Balakwo would be able to be... Well, around here, I suppose. Hmm, that is a little bit janky, I must admit. I didn't really want to do something like that. I was hoping that he would swap for a village. We are the king of our faction, after all, so I was a little disappointed that he would not accept that. Now, I must also mention that I did recruit another six unsullied units from the fellow that lets you recruit those guys, and one of you did mention that he actually goes to wherever you are in terms of if you own a fief here, then... He will be here, and if you own a fief in the Iron Islands, then he'll be there. So, that was wonderful. Thank you very much for telling me that, because I went into Volantis very recently, and I thought, oh yes, look at that, there he is. So, I was able to recruit another six Unsullied units. So, what I've been doing is, yes, sending off recruiters and hoping that they not get engaged upon. Balakwo is doing battle with this fellow right here. Oh, but now he's running. Of course, yes. Who wouldn't run from Balakwo, that is for sure. Ah, uh, yes. So, as I was saying, I was waiting here at Valasar for quite some time, and I was hoping that, potentially, the Valantines would then get eliminated. Or, if not, they would siege a particular castle or fief, and I would be able to react to that, and then take them prisoner, if so, or maybe even just stop them in their tracks. So, I will be, yet again, waiting for some time. Okay, so on my way back to the Iron Islands, because, of course, we had a couple of raidings of our villagers, as you can see. Now, they are mainly due to these Valantine vassals, and I was getting, well, let's just say, more than a little irritated by them. So, I have made my way back here, and we are now going to be attempting a naval battle with one of them. So, let us do it. I wish to make peace with them? Do I? Or shall we talk? No, he doesn't like us that much, of course. Okay, well, <laughs> I wish to make peace. No, I don't think he's the leader, do you think? He only has 80 in his party. I don't think so. Okay, well, let's do it. We are going to close in and board the enemy. Now, do bear in mind that the Valantines are incredible when it comes to having a load of skirmishers. 
so this may be quite painful. But I have a feeling that, hopefully, our units will be hardy enough to be able to withstand their onslaught and we will be able to board their ship without any issue. So let us do just that and I will attempt to get over there to get my sword into the action. Oh my goodness, I cannot jump over there. Okay, well, it appears that maybe I will not be in the action, so I will have to use my crossbow. So let's do just that. Get some headshots or get some shots, not headshots. And yeah, we'll just try and weaken a couple of them and we'll see what we can do about that. Okay, there's a headshot. Not too bad. Although it did take me three shots to get one. There we are. Okay, so yes, actually on the note of crossbows, I have found an arbalest. As one of you stated, they were in Bravos, and I did check Bravos, and as I said previously, uh, one of the crossbows in question, the Arbalest, was cracked, so it had a little bit less damage than I would have liked, but this one has less damage even though it is a regular Arbalest, so not entirely sure why one of you previously stated that an Arbalest would have been better, maybe, but it is cheaper, so maybe you were meaning on that front, because at the moment the Arbalest in question, if I shoot through the smoke right here, oh my goodness, yes, the Arbalest in question has, I believe, what is it, four less damage, yes, four less damage than the crossbow I'm currently using, so, yes, that is rather puzzling to say the least, because usually when you guys suggest things, I am wholeheartedly appreciative of your information, that is for sure, and on that note, I must just mention that, yes, the refilling of the pots of wildfire, they, yes, they do not refill, and thank you very much for letting me know that it is only in certain scenes, such as in tournaments and so forth, that they will refill, apparently. So thank you for clearing that up and letting me know, because that was rather confusing considering. Okay, so that is victory for House Reformia. My apologies for the small cut there, but I had a small interruption and I needed to deal with it. So, here we are. We have lost seven units, which is not too bad. And it appears that we didn't take out all of the enemy. No, it appears not. Okay, well, let us close in and board the enemy once more. And I suppose... I will talk about various other things that I have done in the off-screen time, and on that note, I have recruited Martin Snow, as many of you did state that he was free, and I decided, well, he's free, why not? We may as well go for him. So, yes, we will make him into our foraging expert, as one of you has suggested, because he does have a rather high agility skill, and, of course, foraging is reliant on agility. Not entirely sure why that is, but... You would think it would be intelligence, wouldn't you? But yes, it appears that agility will be rather nice and we'll be able to get four in foraging very quickly indeed. So that will hopefully help us out with our food issues because if you had noticed in the previous time that I had started the recording, when we were talking to Balakwa, of course, I had a large, large army and the food was being depleted very fast indeed. So yes, that is a good idea. Thank you very much for suggesting it. That is definitely going to help us out quite a bit. So there we are. That is our victory. Our first maybe second victory in a naval setting, so that is rather cool. And I suppose we will just head over here now and see whether there are any other... Oh my! Okay. Well, it appears we're just going to be engaging this fellow as well. So let's do it. We meet again. And I haven't broken into your home, I've conquered it. Oh yes, that is for sure. And I've given it to Balakwa, of course. Now... Shall we ask him how he feels about this fellow right here? Oh! Aha! We might be able to convince this fellow to join us. Aha! Because one of you did state in the comments as well that I should probably try this out. I should probably try this option and see how it goes. And we will see... Ah! I have something to tell you. I ask for your support. And I will give you some land, because apparently that is the option that gives you the greatest chance at success, perhaps? According to the fellow that gave me this tip, so... Yes. Let's try it. Let me think. Aha! I might be safer if I joined you! Oh, yes. Okay, I am more comfortable with you and your companions than with my current liege. And... Aha! There we are. You speak of giving me land. Yes, very good. Okay. Let us do it. 
Oh, no, really? Every single option was positive towards joining us. That is so unfair. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I'm going to write to the Union now, and I'm going to say, ah, oh, how dare you? How dare you lead me into this? Uh, okay, well, <laughs> nevertheless, we did try, and we will obviously try ever more in various other engagements with various Valentine vassals to hopefully persuade them to join us. I have no idea why he declined. I must admit, maybe it was choosing the land option. That is probably the only thing that probably could have dissuaded him, but he did seem rather positive about it, so not entirely sure, really, what went on there, but I suppose we'll just continue to use our fabulous crossbow right here. I would like to try out the Arbalest, just in case it has a more powerful shot, because even though it may do less damage, it may have the ability to shoot more powerfully, so, well, that probably wouldn't make sense in theory, but who knows? We'll try it out anyway after this. We will just continue to shoot as many bolts as we can at our opponents and take them out. Now we do have Garrett also firing away, hopefully. He's firing his bow and Brynden is also firing his crossbow, which is great. He's actually become a rather proficient crossbowman, if I may say. And all those days ago when he was a cavalryman and I would forget to tell him to hold position back at our lines when we were sieging, that is a rather nostalgic time for me now. <laughs> but nevertheless, there we are. We have seen Garrett get a kill right there. And I'm just continuing to rack up the headshot kills right here. So that is rather nice. And I hit a friendly troop! No! That is not good. Actually, I didn't hit the friendly troop, did I? No, I didn't hit him. It was someone else. It was Brynden. Brynden hit our friendly troop. I, I don't even have a crossbow. Yes. We're perfectly fine here. I have an arbalest, but it's not in use at the moment. Yes, do you think they bought it? I hope so. Okay, well, <laughs> nevertheless, it appears we have gained victory over our opponents right here. And I'm hoping this is one of the last remaining Valantine vassals so that we can hopefully declare them as the eliminated faction. Some of them have already defected from other Valantines and they've joined other factions, namely the Westerlands. Oh yes, they've joined the Westerlands, so that is a little unfortunate, I must admit, because I encountered a couple of Westerlands units just before I entered the water, and I believe they were on a campaign against the Reach, and they were, let's just say, they had around 10 vassals following each other, and I was just like, oh my. That is rather some serious business, is it not? Yes, it is. So I was, well, let's just say, moving in the other direction very, very quickly indeed, just in case they decided, you know what, we want to take out this very small faction in here. And yes, I tried to avoid that from occurring. But nevertheless, I must just mention also, on the topic of war, the forces from Pentos and from Lys, I believe it is, have declared war against Myrrh. And I suppose that is due to a trade disagreement, according to the text, anyway. So, yes, I was actually thinking of taking sides in that particular, well, that particular conflict. But, yes, I thought maybe it would be more important, instead of starting new conflicts, to resolve the current ones we have at the moment. So, hopefully, seeing as we have just taken out that vassal right here, there will be no more in the ocean here. I can at least hope so. No, it appears not. Okay, well, let us head back to Lordsport, and we will see whether any of our other villages will come under siege. Hopefully not. Okay, so let's just level up these fellows. As you can see, I didn't actually take a very large force in comparison to our previous, because, as you know, the food was becoming an issue. So maybe we can buy some food here, or... Yes, there we are. We can buy, oh, one loaf of bread. Well, that's fine. Maybe we can head into the tavern and see whether we can find a companion that I was told about, which was Cool, I believe. And, whoa. Okay. I think we actually have a lot of different companions here. Oh my goodness. We have a slaver. We have Roderick. We have Canute. We have Felton Flowers. Well, that is very interesting. 
and wow okay so by all means let me know in the comments which companion you think we should take if we should even take all of them maybe we should take all of them who knows but yes by all means let me know what you think about all of these different companions right here and I will do my very best to of course recruit them in the next episode so let us now go to the castle I will want to check to see whether we can get a few more unsullied units and hopefully he will have some more yes he has nine okay he's only had six previously so thankfully enough we have now gained nine and we can oh yes that's when I thought that we actually had a shared garrison because I actually put the other unsullied in the garrison at Volantis so that was a little bit of a mistake on my part I think but nevertheless I will be ending this episode off here I do apologize for the well somewhat average length episode but I do have other things to do today, so I do apologize for that. But nevertheless, we will be returning to Clash of Kings very soon indeed, and hopefully by that time, Volantis and indeed the Volantines will have been taken out. And also, just to remind you, please let me know what you think about conquering Lorath and maybe making one of our companions a lord of it all. So, I thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.